Look at these lovely prints that are made with printing various vegetables and fruit on the jelly plate. Please don't get mad at me for printing food. Hello jelly fans. Let me say this to today's video. I respect the worth of food a lot and I try to never throw anything away. The vegetables and fruit I am printing today, I am only using half of them and I am still eating the other half. Also, when you see how I made this, you will hopefully also find that it is not wasted on my art. First, I am creating some backgrounds by spraying some water with coffee onto the paint on the jelly plate to crack the surface of the paint. As in my last video, I hope that coffee water instead of pure water will add some interest to the structure. And also as in my last video, it doesn't. Here I am adding a reddish color and mixing it with the water on the other color right on the gel plate with a brayer, taking care that the two colors are not mixed too well so that they don't look muddy. This technique I have learned from Sally Hurst. Check her channel out, she is fantastic. Apologies for not having recorded the last step accidentally. After the structure had dried completely, I removed some paint off the jelly plane with some masking tape and then picked everything up with a gray color. First background ready. The second background I made with the same technique. This is a gold color, which Mark Yates used so wonderfully in his recent video. I apply with a brush here and therefore have more control over the paint. Sadly, I again failed with the recording here. I don't know why everything is going wrong today. I guess it's the dangerous pre-Easter fatigue. I picked up the gold with a sheet that I had made a coffee structure on. Instead of a pickup color, I used a matte acrylic medium. So, cutting all of the veggies and fruit in half for the printing. I will use a lemon and a lime fruit. I'm drying them a little with the tissue so that the print is not blurring because of the wetness of the fruit. Also a small chili pepper, complete with its seeds. A garlic bulb. an onion and what I think you call stem cabbage. In German it's called kohlrabi. I'm not using this Savoy cabbage leaf today. I will probably use it for my next video. Easter is coming up. And also I want to add some interest by also printing some cardboard and other packaging of products as I've done many times before. Here are my backgrounds, the golden coffee one which I'll spare for my next video. And this is a coffee spray that dried and it looks so much like a frog that I think I have to draw one on it. Please tell me in the comments if you'd like to see a drawing frog on coffee video. And a third background, which is the only one I'm going to use today. Now for the exciting part, printing the food. I am using my golden open paints as they dry slowly and therefore can be worked on the gel plate longer without the need of a pickup color. Pressing down the cut open cardboard packaging to get this honeycomb pattern. The stem cabbage is a bit tricky with pressing down the leaves and stems. If you want to get rid of the color around it anyway, you can use a tissue here to press it down. That gives you more leaf rim details. I'm pressing the cabbage into the honeycomb structure so that the combs are the ground in which the cabbage grows. That tiny chili pepper. Of course in the end the seeds were everywhere, so many that they could not have been in one pepper. Now the onion, the lime fruit and the lemon. Then I am taking the surrounding color off with a baby wipe. Again, due to the slow drying paint, I can really take my time to work on this slowly, although I speed it up here to not bore you to death. 
I'm creating some structures on top of the onion with the dry tissue. I hope you can see this well. Along with baby wipes, you can use cotton swabs for the detailed corners. These are slim ones for camera lens cleaning purposes. As this is the first print in this session, I will not waste the background, but try it on a blank sheet before. Taking the layer off the jelly plate, I am using Canson mixed media paper that has 200 GSM, which I recommend if you want to paint on it later. And I think the result is very nice. Perfect to be worked out with an acrylic color. With this background, I want to have a similar design but in a landscape orientation. And I will try to do positive prints for this one, meaning that I pick up the paint from the gel plate with the object and then print it on the paper directly. Or is that a negative print? I don't know. Well, that cardboard thing didn't work so well. And also the other direct prints did not print enough. I probably had too little paint on the plate but I can correct that later. Here I'm printing an opening of a tissue box to finish the top of the onion with. Also not recorded, I printed this cooking brush as it fits with the food, but mainly as an homage to you know who. I printed the brush with Akua etching ink and it gave me some trouble later as the paint layer was too thick. Not so bad, but it definitely has to be worked out. But I'm starting with the other one and will hurry you through the developing using a very matte color tone. That paint is so old that it is a bit smelly, actually. I hope it doesn't mingle with the food bacteria and create a mold, mold painting. So don't try this at home. That little pepper is not recognizable as one, but it's just a cute little sprout. Notice that? I speak positively about the food so that you don't get so mad at me. This onion has become a special flower of its own, the Tina Tissue Onion Flower. And I'm adding shadows and highlights. Taking the painted objects to guide me through all these weird structures. You know, the interesting thing is, when you print things and then work them out, you learn a lot about them. After this, I knew how that weird lemon and lime pattern works. And I even know what a stem cabbage looks like inside, which I wanted to know all my life. <laughs> you learn this just by drawing onto it. The same goes for animals, human figures and whatnot. So how do you like the result? As I am so, so vain, I congratulate myself to this one. The other one, I show you here where the trouble with the drawing over it were. The etching ink was too thick, which I am improving by picking up some of the paint with a copy paper. Also, the underlying acrylic paint gave me some trouble in the areas where it's rather thick. I could not draw very well on it, and in the area of the brush it felt like I was only pushing the black etching ink around. That is why I used a marker later, and what a fabulous marker that is. 
The Uniball extra fine brush is so thin that I almost couldn't believe it. And when you push it down, it varies the brush stroke size without being disturbed in the regular ink flow. Amazing. Creating just a little bit more of the brush hair. Careful not to overwork this. These are the stem cabbage leaves. And the onion with its funny hat made of a packaging part. And finally, just some subtle shadows for the background shapes. And this is it. A little too much work on it after the printing, I think, but still a nice work. And guess what? Of the same food, I made a darker version and unexpectedly, the stem cabbage became a skull. Please tell me in the comments if you want to see that one too. See you next time for an Easter video. Bye!